Mastercard, one of the largest payment processors, has seen great financial performance in 2022. The company's revenue increased by 18%, indicating an increase in sales, and its net income saw an increase of 14% year-over-year year as well. Additionally, the stock price experienced a gain of 18% year-to-date following the major indices. Today, we will be taking a three-step approach to thoroughly evaluate MasterCard and determine its fair value. Step 1. Margin of Safety In this step, we'll look at MasterCard's key metrics and ratios to determine if we should be more or less cautious when determining a fair value. Here, we'll delve into MasterCard's financial statement and assess critical metrics and ratios. In step 3, we will be using a combination of valuation models such as discounted cash flow and discounted dividend to gain insight into the value of MasterCard's business. By using these methods, we can determine whether the stock is currently overvalued or undervalued in the current market based on different metrics. In conclusion, by combining the findings from the three steps, we'll ultimately determine the fair value of MasterCard as an investment opportunity. To determine this final valuation of the stock, we'll be using a margin of safety. This margin of safety will be based on the financial ratios, the financial health and the growth of the company. And we'll be using a standard margin of safety of 25% that can never go below 0%. The margin of safety can either increase or decrease based on the ratios that we're going to look at in just a moment. And the severity that the margin of safety will increase or decrease by will be determined by using a scale. When we're using four colors in our scale, Bright red will mean a 5% increase, orange will mean no change, light green will mean a 5% deduction, and bright green will mean a 10% deduction. When we're using three colors, bright red will mean a 5% increase, orange will mean no change, and bright green will mean a 5% deduction. First metrics that we'll be looking at are the margin and EBIT growth. EBIT has grown in the past years, going from $4.6 billion in 2013 to $12.6 billion in 2022. The average EBIT growth during this period is 13%, which looking at our scale is a 5% deduction in a margin of safety. Looking at the metric, it has also grown over the years, going from 55% in 2013 to 57% in 2022. The average margin growth during this period is 0.3%, which is no change in a margin of safety on this metric. If we get to the next metrics, we will be looking at the dividend growth and the payout ratio. The dividends have gone up a lot over the years, going from $0.44 cents a share in 2014 to $2.36 a share in 2023. The average dividend growth during this period is 21%, which is way past the green part of our scale, indicating a 10% deduction from a margin of safety. The payout ratio paying this dividend is also 21% coincidentally, which, looking at our scale, is again a 5% deduction from a margin of safety. If we get to the last metrics, we'll be looking at the debt to EBITDA and return on invested capital. To get a debt to EBITDA ratio, we have to take the debt of the company, subtract the cash from it and divide it by the EBITDA. Out of this, we get the amount of years of EBITDA it takes for the company to pay off all of that debt. And for MasterCard, this is half a year, in this case a 49% debt to EBITDA ratio. This is considered quite low and awards them with yet another 5% deduction for margin of safety. The return on invested capital from MasterCard is incredibly high. It's one of the highest return on invested capital ratios that I've ever seen. It's sitting at 41.4%, which once again is way past the green part of a scale, indicating a 5% deduction from margin of safety, and also indicating that the management is very effective at allocating capital. Looking pretty good so far for MasterCard, let's go look at the valuation models next to determine the intrinsic value of the company. The first valuation model that we'll be using is the discounted cash flow model. And we import the free cash flow of MasterCard going from 2013 to 2022. The average growth rate in their free cash flow annually during this period has been sitting at almost 13%, and I'm projecting their future free cash flow to grow by 12% annually over the next 10 years. With this percentage, we'll determine the future free cash flow for MasterCard and determine a terminal year of valuation using a perpetual growth rate of 3% and a discount rate of 8.5%. This leaves us with a sum of free cash flow of $338.8 billion. And to get to our equity value, we have to add the cash and equivalents and subtract the debt, giving us an equity value of $332.2 billion. And dividing this by the amount of shares outstanding, we get a discounted cash flow price per share of $355.35, which is almost a 13.5% downside from the current price. The second model that we'll be using is the dividend discount model. In this model, I've imported the dividend payments of MasterCard going from 4 years ago to the current year. Their average growth rate in the dividends during this period has been 15.75% and I'm projecting all of their future dividends to grow by 8% and we'll once again be using a discount rate of 8.5% in this valuation, giving us a dividend discount model price per share of $509.76, which is an upside of over 24% out of this model. 
Next model that we'll be looking at is Graham's revised valuation formula. In this model, we take a look at the earnings per share that MasterCard is generating, the growth rate estimate projected by Wall Street, and the current yield of AAA corporate bonds in relation to the average yield of AAA corporate bonds always sitting at 4.4. And we go by the theory of Medjman Graham that a PE of a company should never exceed 7 if the company is not growing. Looking at all of these metrics, we get a fair value of $247.06 out of this valuation model, which is a downside of almost 40%. Keep in mind, though, that this is a very defensive stock valuation model. So that's why we get a pretty big downside, usually. The fourth model we'll be looking at is the multiple valuation. In the multiple valuation, we look at the average P ratio in the industry that MasterCard, in this case, is operating in. And we compare MasterCard to Visa. The average P multiple in the industry then, which is Visa, is 31.08. And to get our fair value then out of this model, we have to multiply the earnings per share of MasterCard with the average P-E ratio in the industry, which with the earnings per share of MasterCard being $10.68, we get a fair value of $331.95, which gives us a downside of 19.60% out of this model. And the last model that we'll be using is the mean reversion theory. In this model, we go by the theory that a company will always trade above or below its mean. And the metrics that we use to determine this are the dividend yield and the P-E ratio. In this case, I've imported the dividend yield of MasterCard of the past five years, and it has been sitting on average at 0.49%, while the current yield is sitting at 0.57%, indicating that's undervalued on this metric. Doing the same with the P-E ratio, on average in the past 5 years it has been sitting at 41.31, while the current P-E ratio is sitting at 38.46, indicating that it's once again undervalued in this metric. This gives us a fair value of this model of $459.36, which is an upside of almost 12%. Let's go look at the final overview of evaluation next. Looking at our final overview, we've imported the discounted cash flow, discounted dividend, Graham's valuation, the multiple valuation, and the mean reversion theory price per share, giving us an average of $380.70. Margin of safety we've determined earlier using a standard margin of safety 25%, deducting 5% for the debt to EBITDA, for the EBIT growth, return on invested capital, and payout ratio, and deducting it by 10% for the dividend growth, leaving us with no margin of safety at all. This means that the fair value is the same as the average out of our valuation models which is still $380.70, and then with the current price of $410.61, we get a small downside of 7.29% out of our valuation, meaning that it's trading at a small premium. If you want to get access to all of the valuation models that I use in my videos and much more models, you can check in the description for my Patreon link. And if there's any other companies that you would like to see me cover on this channel, please let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.